Welcome to sections 13.7 and 13.8. All right, gentle people, in this lecture, what we're going to be talking about are the energetics of bond breaking and bond forming. So the first key point that I want you to understand is that when you break a bond, it is going to require energy. That means I'm going to be putting energy into the system. And so if I'm putting energy into the system, that means that the sign of energy is going to be positive. Now, when you form a bond, so you take two atoms far apart, you stick them together, they go ahead and form a bond. This is going to release energy. If it releases energy, then that means energy is coming out of my system. And if energy is coming out of my system, the sign of energy is going to be negative. So let's go ahead and do a little thought exercise. Let's say I have this molecule methane. So methane is CH4. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to snap or break each one of these carbon hydrogen bonds. So I'm going to take CH4 and I'm going to remove a hydrogen off of it. So I'm going to break this bond right here. And the energy that I have to supply is 435 kilojoules per mole. So once I snap that hydrogen off, I'm left with CH3. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take CH3 and I'm going to snap a hydrogen off. So that means I'm going to break this bond and remove this hydrogen. And if I do that, it costs me 453 kilojoules per mole of energy. So I'm left with CH2. Now I'm going to go ahead and break this bond, remove that hydrogen, and it's going to cost me 425 kilojoules per mole of energy. And finally, I'm going to remove that last hydrogen, break this bond, and breaking this bond in blue is going to cost me 339 kilojoules per mole of energy. Now, what I can do is look at the energy required to break a CH bond. So in this example, I spent 1,652 kilojoules per mole worth of energy across four CH bonds. If I were to go ahead and take the average, what I would get is that the average is 413. Now, what chemists have done in the past is they've done the same experiment over a whole bunch of chemical compounds. They ask themselves how much energy is required to break this certain bond in this certain molecule. They tallied all their results and then they took the average. And what you see in table 13.6 is the average bond energy. That is the energy required to break a certain type of bond. Now, what you guys will see is that when we get to Chem 1B, we are going to be working with tables of values. And so this is going to be our first dive into using thermodynamic values to evaluate reactions and get us an idea about molecular properties. Now, there's a couple of trends that I want you guys to know. For example, let's take a look at this series. And in this series, I have hydrogen attached to X, where X is a halogen. Now, as I go down this series right here, what you guys will see is I'm going down the periodic table. So I'm getting bigger and bigger as I go down. Now, what you will note is if I'm getting bigger and bigger, well, then my bond length is going to become bigger and bigger. So if I were to look at HF, F is a rather small atom, and so if I were to measure the distance between the nucleus, what you guys would see is I can get the bond length. But if I were to go to HCl, well, Cl is a bigger atom, and so the bond length is a much bigger distance. And so what I see is as I go down this list, I get longer and longer bond lengths. But what I want you guys to know is what's happening with my bond energies. In my bond energies, what I see is as I go down, it takes less and less energy to break my bond. 
So my bond energies become lower. And so this trend is something that you guys see throughout that table. The higher my bond energy is, the smaller my bond length is going to be. And you guys can see this on this bottom series with a carbon single, double, and triple bond. You guys see that as I increase my multiplicity, and what I mean by that is if I go from a single to a double, that increases multiplicity, double to a triple, I'm increasing the number of bonds, I'm increasing the multiplicity. So as I increase multiplicity, my bond energy goes up, but my bond length goes down. And you guys can see the results. The triple bond is the strongest bond, but it is also the shortest bond. Now, I want you guys to be careful. If you look at the energies between a single and a double bond, it is not double. And you can do the same for a single and a triple bond. A triple bond is not three times stronger than a single bond. So this increase in multiplicity, while it does increase the bond strength, it is not a linear increase. And you guys can see all those trends in that previous table. I also want to emphasize this. This value right here, 614 for a for a carbon carbon double bond, that means I'm completely breaking the double bond. So it takes 614 kilojoules per mole to separate those two carbons apart. Understand I'm breaking both of those bonds. I'm not breaking one out of the two of the double bonds. It is both bonds that that value represents. Now, one thing we can do with this is we can calculate what's called the enthalpy of reaction. So enthalpy is H and the change in enthalpy is delta H. And so the idea here is this is looking at the energetics of reactions. It is saying how much energy is released or gained by the reaction during the rearrangements of my products and reactants. So let's go ahead and take a look at this reaction. What I can do is I can calculate how much energy is released when I combine hydrogen with oxygen to form water. So let's take a look at our reactants. On my reactant side, I have H2. So I can draw the Lewis dot structure of hydrogen, and I have two of these hydrogens. And the other reactant I have is O2, which you guys know is a double bond. Now what I can do is I can see how much energy it takes to break all these bonds. So if I look at my chart, I see that the HH bond costs 432 kilojoules worth of energy. So I'm gonna break this bond and I'm gonna break this bond. So two of those at 432. The next thing I wanna do is break this oxygen-oxygen double bond. I look at my chart and that costs 495. So only one oxygen at 495. So to break all the bonds on my reactant side, I can add up all the bonds that I broke, I get this value of 1359 kilojoules per mole. Now let's go ahead and look at my product side. On my product side, I make two waters. So I can draw the Lewis structure of those two waters, what I can say is I only have oxygen-hydrogen bonds. So these are the bonds that I formed, and there are four of them that have been formed. So I look on my chart, an oxygen-hydrogen bond is 467. So four times 467 gets me a value of 1868 kilojoules per mole. So this value corresponds to the energy released when I form these two water molecules. Now, if I want the delta H of reaction, what I have to do is take a look at the bonds that I broke, which is that 1359, 
and I'm going to subtract the bonds that I've formed. That 1868. This value is going to be the delta H of this reaction. That's the amount of energy that comes out of this reaction. I'm going to release 509 kilojoules per mole worth of, worth of energy for this reaction. So for your exam, I give you this formula. I will give you a table of values and you guys are expected to calculate the delta H of reaction. With that said, let's go ahead and practice this out. Tell me what the delta H of reaction, the change in enthalpy for this reaction. You guys should go ahead and draw Lewis dot structures and make sure you use this table to calculate bond energies. After you guys are done, go ahead and mark the right answer. All right, gentle people, the first thing we want to do is draw correct Lewis dot structures. So I'm going to start off with my reactants. These are the Lewis dot structures you should have gotten. For HCN, you should have had the carbon triple bonded to the nitrogen with the carbon in the center. For H2, it's simply two H's bonded together with a single bond. Now let's go ahead and look at our product. For our product, the way that you want to draw it is the carbon and the nitrogen are attached to each other. What you guys will find is that three hydrogens are going to be attached to the carbon, two hydrogens are going to be attached to the nitrogen, and you guys are going to have a lone pair. If you guys are having trouble drawing Lewis dot structures, be sure to ask on the forums. So remember, we are after the change in enthalpy, so that means we're calculating delta H. We are going to calculate first the number of bonds that are broken, and we are going to go ahead and subtract the bonds that have formed. So let's go ahead and take a look at the bonds that I'm going to break. So I have a carbon-hydrogen bond. I look in my chart. This is 413 for this CH bond. The other thing I want to break is this triple bond between the carbon and the nitrogen. This costs 891. So for my first reactant, I'm going to have to pay 1304 to break all the bonds. Now my other reactant is a hydrogen-hydrogen bond. So I'm going to break this bond. This bond costs 432. However, remember, I'm going to break two of these guys out, so I'm going to times this value by two. This comes out to 864. I'm going to sum up these two values, and so the total number of bronze broken is 2168 kilojoules per mole. All right, let's go ahead and do the bonds formed. So the first thing I have are my CH bonds. I have one, two, and three of them. Three times, and I'm going to look up the value, and each of these are 413. Next, I have a hydrogen-nitrogen bond. I have one, two of these, and looking at the table, each one of these costs 391 kilojoules per mole. The last bond I have to take into account is the single bond between the carbon and the nitrogen. This is at 305. So I can go ahead and sum all of this up, and this comes out to 2326 kilojoules per mole. So the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna follow my equation out here. So delta H equals the bonds that I've broken, 2168, minus the bonds that I formed, 2326, and what I get out is negative 158 kilojoules per mole. So remember what that negative sign means? The negative sign means that I'm releasing this energy, so energy is going out of my reaction, and I'm going to get 158 kilojoules per mole out of this reaction. Well, I hope that made sense, Chem1A, and remember to stay safe.